My name is David Brennan. I'm an assistant professor in social work at the Factor and Wintosh Faculty of Social Work at the University of Toronto. Um, yeah, I actually was out in the HIV field uh, for about 17 years before I decided to go back to get my PhD. And really, honestly, one of the big motivating factors uh, for me around that was George Bush getting elected because I was really very concerned at that time that what was going to happen was that all of the good and hard work that people have been doing to build up HIV services and programs and organizations was going to be torn apart. Uh, in some ways he did that and in some ways he didn't, but it certainly motivated me to think, what is the next thing that I wanna do in my career? I had always wanted to be a researcher. I'd always paid attention to research over the course of my career. I actually even applied to PhD programs when I was uh, finishing my master's degree, but I thought, I'm 21 years old, I should go get a job, um, and I did. But uh, after, um, after many years decided it was time to go back and to look at learning more about how we can show that the work that people have been doing on the front lines in HIV and policymakers as well uh, is making an impact and making a difference for those who are living with HIV. So one of the other areas that I've looked at is how body image impacts the health and well-being of gay and bisexual men. In fact, one of my studies I collected data at Pride a few years ago, which was funded by OHTN, um, really helped me to realize that body image impacts how people feel about themselves and also impacts how they might engage in risky behavior or not. When people aren't feeling good about themselves, they sometimes take more risks. The other area that's been important in that is that uh, I learned through that study that for ethno-racialized gay and bisexual men, that the issues are much more complicated because people make all kinds of assumptions about gay and bisexual men based on their race. And so, for instance, people might make assumptions about um, a black man or an Asian man in terms of uh, their body, their body parts, or what kind of sexual activity they might do. That is a dehumanizing process, and it's something that impacts sexual risk for gay and bisexual men. Another area that I've been involved with is looking at HIV and aging. Um, this has been a fairly uh, substantially growing area of research recently, particularly here in Canada. And I've been looking at issues of how HIV stigma and mental health quality of life have been impacting those who are living with HIV as they age. So another project that I'm very excited about is a project that was recently funded from the CIHR on, um, along with my colleagues at the Two-Spirited People of the First Nations. We're looking at uh, resiliency and health and wellness among long-term HIV, two-spirited uh, Aboriginal men. This is a fairly new area of research. It's a great team of people that uh, we've pulled together to address uh, what are the ways in which things are going well instead of problematizing and stigmatizing uh, people who are living with HIV long-term. What are the ways in which people are doing well? So this is a very exciting new project I'm looking forward to uh, getting off the ground. Before I even moved to Toronto, I was asked to be part of an OHTN uh, grant that was going in on HIV-related stigma. And um, ever since then, I have been as involved as I can possibly be. Uh, the OHTN has awarded me a, a scholarship award which is a five-year award that allows me to uh, increase my resources and time for the research that I'm interested in doing. As a researcher, the, the, the work I do, I want to make sure has some direct impact on the epidemic. And the way, a couple of ways that I think about, think about doing that. One is we live in this very interesting time when uh, social media is so readily available and accessible. People are 
organizing themselves in listservs and groups, et cetera, et cetera. And this is a great way to be able to say, here's information that might be of relevance and usefulness to you directly. So I think considering to think about how to better utilize social media would be a really great, great way for researchers to continue to advance knowledge mobilization. The second is, I think that by engaging in community-based research, there's a really interesting relationship that happens there, which is that community folks who are working in the field and living with HIV are very clearly wanting answers to certain questions. And researchers are very committed to trying to figure out the best way to answer those questions. So that allows kind of a, a, a fantastic relationship. There's a little bit of give and take where researchers can attempt to address, answer the questions that communities are struggling with, and then communities can help the researchers think about what are the ways in which we can get this information out to those who really need it. I think my hopes for the future in terms of the work that I'm doing are um, pretty grand, but uh, I'd really like to see, for instance, that we have eliminated uh, new HIV infections or minimize them to absolutely tiny numbers, particularly for me, um, among gay and bisexual men. I think uh, the fact that the numbers are still as high as they are is very concerning. And I look forward to the day, as I looked forward, I was, I was delighted the day I opened the Bay Area Reporter and the headline was that there were no obituaries in the paper that day back in 1997. I look forward to the day when we open up the PHAC report or the CDC report that says there were no new infections this year among gay and bisexual men. That's what I look forward to.